Hey everyone. In this video, I'm gonna go over how to parse data using Power Query. So in a previous video, I looked at how to parse data using functions like mid, left, and find. And this time I'm gonna show you a much easier way to do that. And I'll leave a link in the description if you want to follow along with the actual post and the same data set that I'm using. So in this example, I'm using the same exact data that I used in the previous video. And what I've got is country values, cities, and populations that I'm going to extract out of this data set. And so the first thing I'm going to do before I export this data into Power Query is I'm going to get rid of the blank values here because when I export this into into Power Query, I want it to automatically detect the data set. And if there's if there's gaps in between, it's not going to correctly do that i'd have to adjust it so i'm going to show you how i'll do that so if i select the entire column hit f5 press special then select blanks hit ok and i'm just going to right click one of these delete shift cells up and now i've got a continuous data set here so now i can put this in a power query so to do that i'm going to go to the data tab and hit this from sheet button and it automatically now identifies the correct data set. I'm going to hit OK and when I do this it's automatically creating a table in Excel as well. So now it's loading it into Power Query and now that it's now that it's in here I can start by creating the fields that I want. So I'm going to start with the country and so you can notice from this data set it starts with country then city then it has the population. Okay, so the first thing I want to do is pull out the country value. And so in Power Query, you have tabs here for transforming and adding a column. And because I'm adding a column, I'm going to use this tab. And there's options to parse and also to extract. But in this example, I'm going to use extract. And I'm going to use delimiters, which basically tell me you know where to stop and start. And so because the country name it ends with a colon, I'm going to say text before the delimiter. And now when this shows up, I'm just going to enter colon, hit OK. And just like that, I've got the country values just like that without having to pull in any, or having to make any complex formula. If I want to change this header, just double click on this and type in country. Next up, I'm going to pull the city value. Now, this one's a bit trickier because it's between the colon and the start of the brackets here. So I'm going to select this again, go to extract, and this time I'm going to select text between delimiters because I'm going to use more than one. So my starting point is going to be the colon this time because that's where the country value ends and the city value starts. The end delimiter, I'm going to use the opening of the bracket. Hit OK. And just like that, I've got the cities in here. So, so far, so good. Now, the next one I'm going to do is pulling the population. Now, this is a little bit tricky because I could just say to look at the what's in the what's in the brackets. But the problem is sometimes there's other values that are within the brackets. And so what I'm going to do is something a little bit different. I'm still going to go to extract and go text between delimiters and I'm going to use the opening of the bracket and the closing as the end delimiter but one thing I'm going to do is hit the advanced options here and I'm going to change where it starts scanning for the delimiter I'm going to say from the end of the input and what this does is basically it's going to go from right to left instead of from left to right because if I go from right to left I know that the population value is at the end of the string and so I want to start from right to left, because if I go from left to right, I want to pull this value. And that's not what I want. I want this one if I go right to left. So if I hit OK, now I've got the population in there. Again, I'll change this to population. And now I've got my fields. Now, the one thing I also want to do is get rid of these categories. I've got B, C, and all the letters of the alphabet on here. Now, one way I can easily do this is I notice the city field has a blank value because there are no brackets for these headers. So I'm going to click on this, 
hit remove empty. And this is just really the same way you would filter in a regular table or, or spreadsheet. And so that's filtered out. And so my data is really good to go. Now, the one thing that's really cool about Power Query is it saves all the steps that you're making. You probably wouldn't notice that this, this is adding on with every step that I take. And that also means that I don't need this initial column here. I can get rid of this. In Excel, normally if you were to set up the formulas and then delete your source or what you're basing your formulas off, that's gonna create errors for you. But in Power Query, that's not the case. I can just right click this, hit remove, and I've got the fields that I need and my formulas, my calculations aren't, aren't messed up because of this. So now, I'm done. I'll go to the home tab, hit load and close, close, sorry, close and load. And now it's going to populate the, the data into a, a new sheet. And so before I wrap up, I'm going to show you another way that uh, you can do this. In some cases, it's going to be an easier way. And so what I'm going to do is go back to data tab. And if you want to edit a query, there's a, uh, off to the side here, there's your queries and connections. So I'm going to right click on here, hit edit, and I'll go back in here and I'm just going to do this a different way. So what I can do is I can delete all of these steps here and basically start, start over again. Okay. And so I'm still going to go to add column except this time I'm going to use column from examples and how column from examples works is you're telling Excel, okay, this, these are the values that I want to pull, pull in. It's almost like an autocomplete, but first you have to show Excel what, what you're trying to achieve. So for instance, the first country here is Afghanistan. So if I'm going to type that in manually here, Excel can figure out my pattern says okay and it's it's going to use the text before delimiter because it's figured out that I'm pulling the values before the colon. So in this case it works it works beautifully. I hit okay. And now just like before it's created that field. I'm going to change it to country. And again, I'm going to replicate this again. I'm going to hit column from examples. And this time I'm going to enter the city. So I'm going to type city in here and now it seems to work okay but you'll notice here for for bolivia it doesn't pull the the name correctly because there, there's a space in between so i'm going to correct this one because so, so i wouldn't recommend typing in every single value until it figures out your pattern because you, you just want to pick the ones that it doesn't get correct so that way it'll be more efficient so now it's getting a little bit, bit better, but the problem is, you see this one, it, it includes part of the country name. So that's also not right. So I'm going to double click on that and I'm going to eliminate the text before, hit enter. Okay. And so now this looks a lot better and I'm not going to go through the entire data set to test it, but I'm going to say that looks, that looks to be okay. I'm going to hit okay. And then I'm going to change this to city. Now the hardest one to set up last time was the population just because I had to use that advanced um, that advanced criteria. So I'm going to see how easy it is to do it using an example. So for the population, for the first one, I'm going to type in 1.4 million. Okay. And see, this is the problem that I talked about before. If it just looks at the data within the brackets, so the text within the brackets, it's going to pull the wrong one because it's going from left to right. So this is a good example of how it got that wrong. And so what I can do is I can correct this one. I'm going to type in 0 0.2 million and enter. And okay, that's fixed some, but now you'll notice now these NA values are wrong. So I'm going to fix that, fix those as well. And dash A, and I fix one, it'll automatically fix the other one. So, so far this looks a lot better now but the problem is Delhi it's picking up the word as well as the population so I don't want that so I'm gonna double click that clear that out hit enter 
And now that looks a bit better. But now look, this one, 0 0.07 million, it's not picking up the leading zero. Okay, so I'm going to double click there again, adjust this, 0 0.07. And that looks, that looks a lot better. Now, the problem with this is even though it looks fine right now, look at this, look at this formula that Power Query has created. I mean, it would take a while just to figure out what exactly it's doing here. And even though the example looks right, the problem is what if you've got another, another value here that doesn't, is even different from what, what we see so far. And, um, the problem is this rule might not work in all of those situations. And that's why the column from examples works well for, I'm going to say s simple cases or non-complex ones. But once you start, you know, dealing with all these different variations, a formula like this, I'm not, I wouldn't be terribly confident that it's going to work exactly the way I needed to without first breaking that, breaking it apart and seeing what it's doing. And so that's why sometimes using the extract menu is a better option because then you know the logic behind it and know that it's working correctly. You know, if you just look at a sample of, you know, in this case, a hundred data points and it works fine, that's okay. But what about once you get to 200 or 300, is it still going to work the same? And that's, that's the challenge when you're using data from examples. So I'm going to hit okay for now and just go with this. I just wanted to show you the how how it would work and you know how it works really well for for some of these fields but for one like one like population where it's a bit more complex you may want to avoid using column from example and instead going back to to the extract option but if assuming it works okay i can go back to close and load and it'll load the data the same way and so one of the, and I didn't remove the first column in, in this case, but obviously I could do that the same as I did in the first example. But the point is there's, there's multiple ways that you can parse data in Power Query and they're all significantly easier than creating the functions and copying the formulas because obviously functions can slow down your computer if you're, if you've got thousands of formulas in there, whereas with Power Query, it's saving these steps and making your life a whole lot easier and the whole process becomes a lot more efficient. So that's in a nutshell how you can parse data using Power Query. I hope you found this video useful and thanks for watching.